Yo, what is going on guys, Flashverse here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 8, and this will be my review and breakdown for The Flash Season 8 Episode 20, aka the finale for this episode, titled Negative Book Part 2, or I believe it's just Negative Part 2, but... Yeah, this was an interesting episode. Once again, just like last episode, I don't really know how to feel about it. Because there's a lot of stuff that was insane. There's a lot of stuff that I enjoyed so, so much. But there's other stuff which, when I didn't like, I really, really disliked. So I don't know how to feel about it. It's still a really, really good episode, but I don't know, like, where I would, like, you know, rank it or something like that. I don't know how to properly feel about it, because although, as I said, I enjoyed a lot of stuff, there's a few stuff which I really, really didn't like, and it did drag down the episode quite a bit. In regards to, like, the good stuff I loved, I really loved what we had with Eobarthon and the berry stuff for this episode we had an amazing such an incredible fight scene to wrap up these two characters rivalries it was just freaking insane i got chills all the way throughout and it was just so so badass with them both being incredibly op and i just loved it we did of course get answers in regards to what's causing iris's time sickness and how it happened we did get more like reveals in regards to like the negative speed force and everything going on with that how thon became the avatar of the negative force all of that we found out and it was really really interesting i of course loved having all the flash family over there all of them had some badass scenes all of them got to interact with one another and i just loved that family dynamic of the flash family i thought it was really really cool Grant Gustin with his acting, holy crap, especially when we got to the opening scene and he's just like lightning zapping Thon, just absolutely obliterating him, chills man, his acting is so so good and as I've said this before in different videos but whenever him and Tom Kavanagh share the screen there's just something so special where it just like elevates the episode a lot, it just makes it much more intense, it makes it so much better with both of these characters acting, and I would say that those two actors are the best actors on the show anyways, but whenever them two share the screen, it's just so, so good, and we just see how great it is all the way throughout this episode, and it was just beautiful, and of course we had a really cool ending and cliffhanger with like the frost stuff, and of course a season 9 villain teaser, Hinting to Cobalt Blue, which I thought is really, really cool. And it looks like we're finally getting it. Of course, the show's going to do their own spin on it. And I can't wait to see how they make it work. In regards to the stuff I didn't like, once again, making it there, the Cecile stuff. I just, I just don't like what they're pushing for Cecile. I really don't like what they're doing with her character. And she became so annoying in the episode. Like, there's that one scene in Star Labs where she's like, Oh, Barry, I feel this. Now I feel like you're feeling this. Now you're feeling this. Just stop it. Just stop it. It's getting annoying and <laughs> I just don't care for it. And whatever they did with Cecile in regards to like the her having this big role with the forces stuff, it's understandable, but I don't like what they're pushing with Cecile in terms of that type of stuff. I just want her to go back to her like season five self. I really don't like whatever they're doing over here, but it is what it is. It did kind of, I mean, it did significantly drop the episode for me. Uh, we, of course, did have a very overhyped and disappointing cameo. That, of course, being Damien Dark. Of course, it was really cool seeing him. But I don't really think anyone cared for it, to be honest. And, yeah, Danielle Nicolette <laughs> overhyped the crap out of the surprise cameo. And it did get quite disappointing. And we did, of course, have other journalists overhyping this as well. So that was not something I appreciated because all of us expected something really cool happening. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. We just got Damien Dark, which, as I said, no one really cares about. But he was still there and it was cool seeing him. And I did like what they did with him in this episode. But it was not the cameo anyone expected. And it was quite overhyped. I really did not like what they did with the Mina Dawan stuff as well. I thought they absolutely wasted her character. And I really hope they do her character justice because I really wasn't happy with what they did with her in terms of her losing her speed. I wish she maintained as a speedster all the way throughout. So I wish they did something better with that. But oh well, it is what it is. It did happen and that did of course drop the episode for me as well. 
But of course, before I get into like the main breakdown itself, of course, spoiler alert, because this is a review and breakdown after all. So I'll be going over some major spoilers, which you certainly wouldn't want to hear from me. So for those who haven't seen the episode, of course, go watch the episode and then come back later for this breakdown. But for those who are staying, be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so you are aware of more Arrowverse content coming your way. Okay, so the episode, of course, picks up with Barry upset about the death of Iris, he's shocked seeing Thon in front of him, he's like, oh Thon, you died, how are you here? And we had some peak acting between Thon and Barry, or Tom Kevin and Grant Gustin. Absolutely amazing and well acted scene. Thon mentions that the negative forces brought him back and essentially he became the avatar of the negative speed force. We do also have Bart and Nora being there, so they did not get erased from existence yet, which does make sense because time didn't fully set in stone yet. And they did also say, oh, dad, maybe Iris is not dead yet because, well, we're still alive. And we did also have uh, quite some annoying scenes with Cecile where she's like, oh, I feel this and that. Of course, that's when Team Flash gathered around. But yeah, Barry was incredibly pissed off with what Thon did. He just goes for like this massive lightning zap. It was so cool. And as I said, Grant Gustin's facial expressions, his acting in this scene, it was very, very well handled. And I absolutely loved it. We did, of course, have um, Barry having this plan to go to the negative speed force so that he could, of course, go after Thon because he wants revenge. This man wants revenge because of what he did to Iris. And although, yes, the Flash family are like, okay, maybe Iris is not dead yet, Barry does not agree. Barry thinks that Iris is dead. He's accepted that she's dead and he just wants to go after Thon and just get revenge. Um, this is this new side of Barry, which we haven't seen before, like he just wants vengeance so bad and I thought it was quite cool seeing that. We of course did have Chester reverse engineering the tachyon devices so that Barry, Bart and Nora could enter the negative speed force, however it does start malfunctioning but Barry wants to push his limits for his tachyon device and he tries to push it but of course it does not work. And then Barry does end up using Mina's negative tachyon speedster sharing ability for it to happen as well. So yeah, that was a pretty cool way to go at it as well. Because of course Mina does use the negative speed force. So it does seem like they brought Mina Dawan just for the sake of plot. Not, not really much of fan service. And then of course we did see her get wasted <laughs> later on in the episode. Which I wasn't too happy about. But I did like what we got with Mina in this episode and once again we had some really nice scenes between Barry and Mina and that was a dynamic I really enjoyed and I'm glad that we got more of that. In regards to the reverse flash stuff of course we have Eobard Thon going into the negative speed force and it's in like this reverse flash point negative speed force type thing where he's in the Allen um, loft if you will but it's of course with him and Iris instead of Barry and Iris. And of course, we find out that the negative forces made it that way. And then they do also mention that this version of Eobard Thon became the avatar of the negative speed force, unlike the other Thon who needed to go away because he wasn't capable of becoming the avatar of the negative speed force. And of course, we do have all of the negative forces combining their powers to the reverse flash and making him just incredibly leveled up. And of course, we knew where this was heading. We did also have Cecile's storyline, which as I said, I don't really like what they're doing with this character. And I'm really glad that they ended her character the way they did because I really didn't like this level up they gave Cecile. And we didn't really get an explanation for it as well. I don't really know how this happened. So that is a nitpick I had, I guess. But yeah, we do have Cecile getting voices in her head. And that's, of course, Bashir calling. And because of Cecile's leveled up ability, she's able to like talk to Bashir and then like interact with him. And then we have all the like the psychics meeting at CCC Media. We have the Queen, the Top, and Cecile like combining their abilities to bring Bashir back. And of course, we do have Cecile putting on the psych mask for this to happen. And essentially, Cecile was the key to bringing the positive forces back. It definitely was not a strong point in the episode and did get really annoying, but. Once again, what can we do? It was part of the episode. But we do also have the Iris stuff where Iris is of course in the time stone with Damien Dark. As I said towards the start of the video, it was cool seeing Damien Dark, but it was a very, very disappointing cameo and overhyped. So I guess when it comes to like hyping things up in regards to upcoming Flash episodes, especially going into season nine, never listen to any side character, especially Daniel Nicolette, after this. 
never listen to her ever again. She did this last year where she said, oh, all the good villains, all like everyone's favorite villains are coming back from old seasons of The Flash. She said that for season seven and we only got Abracadabra, the rest no one knew about. And then for this, oh, it's a cameo that no one's going to expect. You're going to be so excited to see him. Ends up being Damien Dark. Yes, fair enough. It was cool seeing him and the scenes he had were really good. But it was a very disappointing cameo and it was definitely overhyped. And of course, journalists agreeing with Daniel Nicolet certainly didn't help as well. So when it comes to any upcoming mysterious character, do not listen to them. Just go in with low expectations, I guess. But yeah, despite the disappointing cameo, of course, as I said, we did have some really good scenes between Iris and Damien Dark. And of course, Damien Dark does reveal that the negative forces essentially used Iris and gave her this time sickness to essentially build up these negative tachyons. So like their whole plan essentially worked pretty much. So essentially, Iris is not dead. She's only like in this time stone and Damien Dark is essentially helping her get out of it. Joe is of course upset due to the events happening with Iris's death and we do have future Jay Garrick and Joan Williams I believe. I don't think they are from present day because of course future Joan Williams was with Iris. So I'm guessing this future Jay Garrick and future Joan Williams. But they of course mentioned that they were tracking like um, temporal waves or something like that. They were tracking where Iris is at and of course she is in the time stone. They're able to find that. And Damien does talk through to Iris and we get this really nice pep talk and this great scene between Damien and Iris. I love the interactions they had together. And of course, Iris does use like her power of love slash connection to Barry to essentially break out of the time stone. And it was a really sweet scene. I did really like it. But yeah, we have Barry going into the negative speed force and he sees Don pretty much being overly powered and charged. He's of course questioning what's going on and it is revealed through negative Dion that this is all happening due to what Barry has done during Armageddon when removing Thon's speed. And of course, Barry is eventually thrown out of the negative speed force. Now, we do also then have waves of um, negative tachyons signatures around the city chester does of course mention that and thon is in this like new overly powered black suit with all of the powers of the forces absolutely wreaking havoc across the city literally going around massacring and killing civilians really really menacing absolutely sick scene from thon and it just really raised the stakes of this episode because we've never had a villain really going around just killing people before so having this especially with the flash's arch nemesis was insane i really really loved it I love the powers of Thon with him like using all of the forces to do certain stuff that was really cool such as that one with the Flash family versus the reverse Flash. It was a really cool scene we of course had all the Flash family going around throwing lightning at Thon only to find out that Thon used Sykes powers to swap him and Bart so essentially Team Flash just lightning zap Bart. Just showing how powerful Thon is over here and I just loved it it was really really good. Thon, of course, sends all the speedsters back in time for like a billion years, I believe. That's what he mentioned. And then we get Eobard Thon versus the Flash. Thon is, of course, beating Barry at first. He's using like the Still Force. And we have Thon essentially taunting Barry, saying that he should have killed him when he had the chance to. Now, all of this is pretty much Barry's fault. And then we have Thon essentially throwing lightning towards Barry to just finish him off. But then the lightning is frozen. Thon is confused. He's like, okay, wait, what's going on over here? How is this possible? And we find out that all the forces return and they just fuse into Barry. So we have force flash versus negative reverse flash or negative force reverse flash. It was such a freaking insane final battle. What a way to end the season with these two going at it with easily one of the best fight scenes on the show they got to use all the variety of force abilities during their fight they used the strength force Thon of course used a lot of the sage force it was so so sick seeing it we got a really cool chase scene around the city as well I absolutely loved it I couldn't have asked for anything better but yeah Barry's about to kill Thon and Iris of course tries talking Barry down and then we have Barry saying like okay I'm not gonna fight you Thon and he goes into meditation and then Thon's just like okay you're crazy I'm just gonna kill you and of course we have Thon like flying with lightning and he tries sh zapping lightning towards Barry but it's just going through Barry so Barry is essentially using like the still force I believe to go through it I guess I don't know. But yeah, Thon's just like, I need more power, I need more power. And then Thon just goes insane. He literally like lightning zaps almost the whole city, he tries destroying the whole city. But Barry is able to essentially reverse time. It was an incredibly sick scene and it was so, so insane. I got chills seeing it. And I love the lightning color changes when 
all of them use the different forces. I thought that was a really cool addition they added as well. But essentially we find out that Thawne is erased from existence, so Thawne is no more. So I guess this is it for the Reverse Flash, although you never really know with the Reverse Flash. He is unpredictable, so we might see him in the near future at some point. But we of course have Barry bringing back all the speedsters using the Steel Force. And then we of course have the universe setting it's resetting itself back after Thawne of course causing an imbalance with it. Now we do also have other reveals in the episode later on such as we find out that Iris's time sickness is no more, it's fully gone and yes I Iris is going to be in season 9 because Candace Patton did sign a deal where she is confirmed to now appear in season 9. Mina Dawan does not have her speed anymore which I did not like, I wish they kept her as a speedster and I do hope to see this character in the future as well because she was a great character, I did really enjoy what we had with her for these couple of episodes and I wish that she stayed as a speedster, maybe stayed as like a sidekick every once in a while so I wish we really had Mina having her speed back but they did not give it which was quite disappointing for me. Iris does of course give Mina Eobard's yellow tie so that was a sweet gift they gave as well and we find out that Cecile levels down thank god and hopefully they don't push it to that extent that they did with this story then again because I don't want to see that if like Cecile's just normal again with her like minor abilities then I'm happy with that I'll be very very happy with that but of course we do see her getting like force abilities as well which I guess is kind of hinting to her leveling up but I hope not to that degree which we saw in this storyline. We of course have Tinya Waza reuniting with her mother. Now of course Tinya Waza will be having somewhat of an important storyline for the Flash season 9 because she did have the storyline with Cisco in the Flash Earth Prime comics and that does of course lead to Bloodwork escaping prison. So for those who haven't read that comic book, I do suggest that you guys read it because it will play a part for The Flash Season 9. And that is, of course, with Tinya Wazo and Cisco. So that is quite interesting as well. But we then head over to Caitlin's place and we have Chillblain essentially waking up after like a nap. And we find out that there's like a malfunction in the cryopod. Of course, Chillblain is shocked because this is not Frost. This is not Caitlin. It's someone else. And of course, you can assume that Killer Frost is born again. She's reborn, and I think this is it for Caitlyn. I think she's just going to stay Killer Frost for ne like for for the remaining of the show, I guess. If they redeem her, I mean, I'll be fine with it, but I don't know if I want that. I just want her to just remain Killer Frost. That would be quite interesting, but I'm very, very intrigued to see where the storyline goes going into Season 9. But of course, the episode ends with Barry and Iris essentially catching up together. They're having a chat. And then we have a Barry saying that a negative speed force needs another avatar. And then we, of course, cut to 2049. And we see like a blue flame crystal, of course, setting up a cobalt blue villain, which I'm really, really excited about, especially if they do do like Rick Cosner or something like that. I would have chills with that. I would absolutely love that. That would be so, so sick. But yeah, it looks like we're having cobalt blue as a main villain for the Flash season nine, which I am really, really excited about. I cannot wait for that. But yeah, overall, as I said, I don't really know how to feel about this episode. I really loved a lot of aspects of it, but there's a lot of stuff I disliked as well. But again, it was a, it was still a really, really sick finale. And definitely The Flash Season 8 is the third best season of The Flash, in my opinion. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. If you guys have enjoyed the video, please give a like and subscribe. Be sure to tell me in the comment section down below what you guys thought about the episode. I'm interested to see all of your thoughts towards all of it as well. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video.